Hi there, my name is Chris Harris, I'm from AndreTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at testing for halide ions uh, and in particular we're going to look at the reactions with sulfuric acid. Um, now if this is in your syllabus you'll know that actually this can be quite tricky and uh, the reactions look really really complicated but hopefully I'm going to show you a way which might be not only easier to um, work out what these equations are but remembering the steps as well and the processes that are needed with these reactions as well. Um, now, I've got to also point out as well that you do need to know about uh, redox chemistry, um, especially at AS level for this. So uh, if you don't know about redox chemistry, then I recommend that you have a look at that as well first before you look at this video. Um, but um, I have made videos on redox concepts as well. And I'll plug the videos um, when we need them in here as well, so you can have a look at them alternatively. Okay, so we're going to start by looking at reducing and oxidizing agents. Now, reducing agents are basically chemicals which will um, lose electrons. So these are species which are um, willing to give up electrons to another atom or molecule. Uh, and oxidizing agents do the opposite. They gain electrons. Now, if you're not sure on um, the basic principles of uh, redox, uh, so oil rig, for example, and uh, oxidizing and reducing agents, then if you just click on the link below, uh, and you can have a look at that first. But I'm going to assume that you know it. Um, now these are really, really important when we come to explain these types of reactions here. And I've got a, um, a reactivity um, series here. So this is effectively a reactivity series just for group 7 halide ions. So I've got F minus at the top, Cl minus, Br minus, I minus, and At minus. Now effectively these reagents here um, are better reducing agents as we go down the group. Now remember, if we go back to what a reducing agent is, a reducing agent is a species which loses electrons. Now, if you think about it, um, fluorine has got a very, very small ionic radius. Um, the um, extra electron that it's got in its outer shell to make it F minus is held there really, really strongly. Um, and that's because of the strong um, um, nuclear charge uh, in the fluorine, the very little shielding. And that means that it'll hold on to its electron really well. But if you come down the group, down to I minus and AT minus, the, ion, the ionic radius gets a lot, lot bigger. So this extra electron that sits in the outer shell is much further away from the nucleus, um, and so is therefore more likely to lose that electron than something like F- minus because of the extra shielding between the nucleus and the outer electron. So we describe these as we go down better reducing agents. Now, if this is in your syllabus, um, then you'll need to know the reactions of these halide ions with sulfuric acid. And we can take sulfuric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid, um, and we can reduce that to several products. So the products that you, we can reduce sulfuric acid to are effectively sulfur dioxide, sulfur, and hydrogen sulfide. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the reactions of these three halide ions here, uh, and we're going to look at, um, obviously, what products they make when we act them with sulfuric acid. We're also going to look at the equations as well, and I've got them all set up here, which I'll come on to in a minute. And I'm also going to point out what you would observe with these reactions as well, because it is important that you're able to write the equations and observe them. Um, but like I say, what we're going to do when we do these equations, we're actually going to balance half equations. Um, now, if you're not sure on how to balance a half equation, if you just click on the link below, uh, and you can watch the video on balancing half equations and combining them to form a full ionic equation, um, but uh, for this video, I'm going to assume that you know how to do that and the steps involved. So we're going to start with, here's our uh, halogens here, our halide ions. So we're going to react each one of these with sulfuric acid, and we're going to see what happens. So chloride ions react with sulfuric acid, and what actually happens is when we react all of these, so chloride, bromide, and iodide, and fluoride for that matter, fluoride is very weak at reducing, and actually doesn't reduce anything, um, so um, fluoride is exactly the same reaction as chloride, and so um, I haven't included it on here for space reasons. Um, but you can see here that actually all of these reactions will form these products here. So I've lab labelled them A, A and A, so it's a bit like a, like a racetrack, I've, I've set it out in a different way. So sodium chloride, I've taken sodium chloride here, again I've assumed that the salt that's producing the iron is sodium based, it could be potassium, it could be lithium, it could be anything, just watch out for it in the exam, make sure you know what it is. Okay, I'm using sodium chloride, I'm going to react that with sulfuric acid. Now all of these reactions, whether it's chloride, bromide or iodine, or iodide, uh, will actually form 
um, similar products. So sodium chloride plus sulfuric acid, and what it will actually produce is something called sodium hydrogen sulfate plus, uh, and in this case we'll form HCl. Now this can change, this halogen could be, and I'm just going to write it down here, and um, this halogen could be, um, uh, obviously you'll form HCl as one product, but if that was a bromine, then you'd form HBr. Uh, and if that was um, iodine, you'd form HI. So instead of writing it out three times, obviously what you do is just change that halogen, but the reaction is effectively the same. Now, what you'd see here, these, especially HCl anyway, um, is actually, um, you'd see some white misty fumes being given off. And this is a classic sign that hydrogen chloride is being produced. So I'm just going to write that down there, and that's our first observation. So you see white misty fumes. Okay, so you know that's hydrogen chloride. Now that is acidic, incredibly acidic. So this reaction straight away, uh, you would have to actually do in a fume cupboard or in a well-ventilated area because this is really, really nasty to breathe in. Um, so that's the first precaution you would take. Okay, so that's with all the reactions A. Now we just change the halogen like I say. Um, now, if we come down, um, chloride is not a very good reducing agent. It's quite weak, as is fluoride as well. And actually, this reaction here is not redox. We haven't actually changed the oxidation state of sulfur. Um, it's plus 6 here, and it's still plus 6 here. So this is not a redox reaction. This is just a, um, a standard um, reaction that we've actually got here. Um, but if we come down to bromine, uh, now, bromide ions are actually better reducing agents than chlorine, and what they'll do is they'll reduce your sulfuric acid to um, a product like sulfur dioxide. Now, you do need to know these um, reduction products. So, this is our first reduction product. Sulfuric acid, the oxidation state um, of sulfur in sulfuric acid is plus 6. The oxidation state in sulfur dioxide is plus 4. Now, we've gone from plus 6 to plus 4, so that means we have reduction. So this is reduction process. Now, because we have a reduction process, we've also got to have an oxidation process as well. And actually, um, the sulfuric acid has been reduced, but the halogen, in this case we're looking at Br- is actually being oxidized, and it oxidizes to its atomic version. So in this case, Br- will go to Br2. Um, and it's the same with iodine as well. So iodine, iodide ions will also form SO2 as well. That's why I put these two together. But all you do is just change the halogen at the top. The reaction is the same. So I'm going to stick with bromine. Uh, I'm going to do this in a um, red colour so we can see um, what's going on, what we've added. So first of all, I'm going to show our oxidised process first. So Br- will go to Br2. So we're going to balance this. So I'm going to put a 2 in front of there. So we've got two Br- going to Br2, so that's the first step that we do. Um, we then try and balance with uh, water. Uh, you can see that we have no oxygens here, so we don't need to add water here. Um, we have no hydrogens, um, so we don't need to add H+. Pluses. So the next step that we need to add are electrons. So as you can see here, we've got two minus on this side, neutral on this side. So what we add is two electrons on that side, and that's our uh, oxidized version balance. Now, we said also that sulfuric acid is also being reduced to SO2, so this is step B. So what we do is we look at these reactions here, and we start off with um, looking to balance oxygens first, and we balance them using water, like I say. So uh, see we've got four oxygens here and two oxygens here, so we need two more oxygens on this side. Um, and again, like I say, the only way we can balance oxygens is by adding water in these cases. So I'm going to put two. H2O on that side. Okay, and um, then once we've done that, we need to balance protons, uh, balance hydrogen, sorry, using protons. So you can see we've got two hydrogens here. We've got four hydrogens here in total. So we need a total of two more H pluses on this side to balance out our hydrogens. Uh, and then the final step is then we need to balance out um, charges and we balance them using electrons. So you can see here that we've got a 2 plus charge overall on the left hand side, a neutral charge on the right hand side. So we're going to add two electrons to this side here. Now that is our two half equations that are balanced. Now what all we have to do is combine these two uh, equations um, and write a full ionic equation to explain what's happening at step B. So um, we have to make sure that our electrons are balanced and you can see here that they are. Uh, and we can cancel out these electrons 
So I'll do this in um, blue. So cancel it and two electrons there. And we just rewrite out everything on the left hand side. So we've got 2Br minus plus H2SO4 uh, plus 2H plus. Uh, and that will form Br2, which is up there, plus SO2 plus 2H2O. So this reaction at step B, whether it's bromide or iodide, is actually this reaction here. And that is effectively how you work them out. But it is really important that you be able to split the Br the Br minus to Br2 and that. Um, so your oxidizing and reduced form, it is important that you split that, then combine at the end. Trying to work that out from just from here is very difficult. So you can see here the products that we form are Br2. This is a brown liquid that you'll see. So you'll see some, and you might even see some vapor as well, so it's quite volatile. So you might see some brown vapor being given off. Um, and you'll also get sulfur dioxide, which is a pungent uh, gas that's being produced as well. So this is a classic sign of bromine being formed. Now, if this was iodine, um, then you would see um, maybe some purple vapor being formed or it would go like a really almost black color that's being produced from the iodine. Okay, if we go to the next one, which is C. Now, iodine is a much more powerful reducing agent. So actually, iodine will not only reduce your sulfuric acid to SO2, but it'll also reduce it further to sulfur, which has an oxidation state of zero. You can see the oxidation state dropping. So this is a more reduced form, and it will also produce H2S as well. But we'll come on to that in a minute. So we'll start with this one here first. So I'm going to go through the same process as we did here. So balancing our half equation, you can see we've got I minus an I2. So we need to balance this first. So we'll put two I minus to I2. We need some electrons to go on there. And so we add two electrons to balance that one out on there. And then on this side, we have sulfuric acid going to S. So again, we write down what we started with, which is sulfuric acid, and the reduced product that we're making in this case, which is sulfur. Um, and we're going to balance our electrons. So uh, balance our atoms, our half equation, sorry. So we're going to... Uh, first of all, balance our oxygens first, so we add water. So you've got four oxygens on the left, so we need to add four lots of H2O on the right to balance out our oxygens first. We then need to balance out hydrogens. So you can see that we have um, eight hydrogens in total on this side, two hydrogens on this side, so you can see that we actually need six H pluses here. Put that there. Uh, and then finally, we need to balance out charges. We have a neutral over here, no charge over here plus six overall here. So to balance this out, we need to add six electrons to the left-hand side as well. Now, we need to form our full ionic equation to explain what's happening at C. So um, we need to see we've got two electrons and six here. So we need to multiply this top row by three. So I'm going to put that in green over here. So we need to multiply this top row by three. So that means we don't have two I minus, but we now have six I minus, we have three I2, and now over here, we have six electrons. And because we have our six electrons there, we can cancel that out and cancel that out, uh, and then we combine to form our um, full ionic equation. So we're going to have six I minus, put that there, plus H2SO4, uh, plus six H plus, so that's everything on the left-hand side, and that will form 3I2 plus S plus 4H2O. Okay, and so that is effectively what's happening at step C. Okay, and then on to the last one. Because iodine is such a good reducing agent, it will reduce it all the way to H2S. And um, Actually, before I go on to that, I just want to point out that sulfur is a yellow solid. So if you see a yellow solid, then you know your halogen has got to be, or your halide ion has got to be iodide. Um, it can't be any of these because none of these will actually form, are not powerful enough reducing agent to form the yellow solid of sulfur. Okay, so that's a classic sign you've got an iodide ion. Okay, and um, if we just go to this last one, which is H2S, now this has a smell of rotten eggs. It's a really horrible smell. It's actually um, really toxic as well. So again, you need to put this into a fume cupboard. And um, it's also known as sewer gas because um, it's what's produced from um, um, sewer or bacteria that decomposes sewage down, so it produces this horrible eggy smell, rotten egg smell. 
Okay, so we're going to start with our reaction. Here's our I minus. That goes to I2. Shows we've got oxidation. So we're going to add um, some electrons onto the right hand side, but we're going to balance it first. So we've got two I minus. So that makes sure that we have a balanced number of atoms. Uh, we're going to add two electrons onto this side, and that balances out the charges. Uh, onto this one, sulfuric acid going to H2S. Again, make sure the sulfurs are balanced, which they are. Um, we then need to balance oxygen. So we've got four oxygens here. So on this side, we effectively need to add four H2O on this side. Okay. Uh, we then need to balance our protons, or hydrogen, sorry, using protons. You can see we've got eight hydrogens here, plus these two, which totals up to ten hydrogens in total. We've only got two here, so that means we need 8H plus on this side. So I'm going to put them there, 8H plus. Um, and uh, finally, to balance out the charges, you can see it's neutral on this side. It's positive by 8 on this side. So we need to add um, 8 electrons on this side to balance out that equation there. Okay, you can see to form our full ionic equation, uh, you can see that we've got 8 electrons here, 2 here. So we need to multiply this top one by 4. So I'll put times 4 on the top. Put that on the top. Uh, and then what we do is we change uh, we change our lettering, obviously our numbering, sorry. Multiply the whole thing by 4. So this is going to turn into so 2 fours are 8 I minus. This is going to turn into 4 I2. Uh, and that's going to turn into 8 E minus on there. Now because they are balanced, we can then cancel them out. So we're going to use a blue pen to do this. So we cancel like that, cancel like that, uh, and then we rewrite out our equation. Again, we'll do this in blue. So this is going to be 8i minus plus H2SO4 plus 8H plus, uh, and that will form 4i2 uh, plus uh, h 2 s plus 4H2O. Okay, and so that is effectively what happens at reaction D. These in the exam uh, can uh, give you loads and loads of marks. You do need to be aware that obviously as we go down, these become better reducing agents uh, and they have the ability to reduce sulfuric acid to steps or to um, chemicals which are really, really reduced. So something like this here, H2S, which you can see, sulfur has an oxidation state of minus two. Uh, make sure you know your equations. Uh, redox is a lot easier if you write up your two half equations first, then followed by your full ionic equation. Um, like I say, if this looks a little bit um, strange in terms of what I've done here in terms of the balancing, uh, make sure you go back and you have a look at how to balance half equations first. Uh, otherwise, this might not make a lot of sense. But a um, bit of a marathon. Hope it helps. Bye.